where we focus our attention matters. Whether kids are focusing holistically, specifically, at combinations of bits, at individual bits, those focuses of attention will dictate how kids learn skills, how they learn materials, and how they progress further in their learning. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice, where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now the article I've selected this week is called Attentional Focus During Learning Impacts N170 ERP Responses by Jan Cheva and colleagues. Now for those of you who managed to stay awake during the reading of that title, I assure you this is a really interesting paper because it addresses one of the key issues in education today, namely the reading wars. <laughs> So for those of you who have never heard about this before, in education there is kind of an ongoing civil war concerning how do we best teach kids how to read. Now one camp says it's all about teaching kids about letter sound combinations. So how do letters sound, how do we link those together to make words cool. The other camp says we need to teach kids to read holistically. Don't worry about the letters, don't worry about the sounds. What does the word as a whole look like and can you use the context to recognize each word in turn? So you've kind of got the grapheme phoneme versus the whole word reading camps. Now they've been battling for about 30 years and this paper provides pretty strong evidence for one of those camps. But to understand what's going on, we have to take a quick look at the back of the brain. So the brain tends to recognize and process visual images holistically. So for instance, anytime you see a face, the entire face is processed simultaneously, or everyday objects are processed holistically. Now when the brain does this holistic visual processing, it tends to do it on the right side of the back of the brain, so we call this right lateralization. Interestingly, amongst expert readers, words are never processed on this right side. They're always processed in the back on the left side of the brain. They're left lateralized. So what we think is happening in this part of the brain breaks down words into small chunks, assigns sounds to those chunks, and helps you rebuild back words up later for understanding. So an easy way to kind of conceptualize this is think of the difference between, say, a picture of a mountain and a graph. A mountain can be processed holistically. You don't need to look at every tree to know, yep, that's a mountain. But a graph is symbolic. You need to know what every word, every line, every number says if you want to make sense of the whole. So you have to first break the graph down before you can build it back up. That's what the brain does with words. It breaks them down, then rebuilds them. Interestingly, amongst illiterate adults or many kids suffering from dyslexia, when they try and read, we see right lateralized activation, which means their brain is trying to process words holistically. It's trying to view them as an image without recognizing that it has to suss meaning out of it. Now cue this paper. What these researchers did is they wanted to see can we guide people's attention in a certain way to get them to focus on different aspects of language, so holistically or small kind of bits. Can we guide that attention to change how people learn and understand to read different scripts? So what they did was they invented a whole new language script, so a bunch of, 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 of squiggles and lines that when stacked together could form words. And they had different groups of students learn how to read this language. Now the only difference is this. So each group, there were two groups of kids learning this language. Each went through the exact same process. The only difference is right at the beginning, group one was told to focus their attention on the word as a whole. Use the image as a whole to try and make sense of it. Whereas group two was told to focus on the individual units within each image. So don't worry about the picture as a whole, break it down and see what's going on. So as you can kind of see, it's kind of the whole word reading versus the kind of letter sound connection reading. And what happens? Well, after training, each group was tested on what they learned during their training. And it turns out that when they were quizzed on words that they had seen during the training phase, the whole word reading group performed a little bit better than the group focused on the individual letters. So interesting. But here's the fun bit. When both groups were tested on new words, words they hadn't seen during their training phase, it turned out the whole word group suffered incredibly. In fact, they performed no better than chance. They were just essentially guessing. Whereas the individual unit group did significantly better. They were able to take words they'd never seen before and read them just fine. Now here's the most interesting bit. Let's now draw it back to the brain. The group that was focused on the image as a whole showed right lateralization as they read the words, whereas the group that was focused on the individual units and their sounds showed left lateralization. So in a very real sense, in less than a couple days, these individuals were able to start to organize their brain to turn this activity into pure reading or simply image processing. So now let's bring this back to us. What does this mean for us as teachers? Well, hopefully you've caught on that idea number one is that where we focus our attention matters. 
Whether kids are focusing holistically, specifically, at combinations of bits, at individual bits, those focuses of attention will dictate how kids learn skills, how they learn materials, and how they progress further in their learning. So we have to be very cognizant as teachers of where do I want your attention and how am I guiding it? What aspects am I getting you to attend to? Because that's going to drive learning. Now let's bring that back over into the reading wars and we tend to see that this concept of decomposing words into letters and sounds is an incredibly powerful technique. If all skilled readers in the world are left lateralized, and I don't just mean in English, I mean any language across the board, this means it makes sense to give kids time to first learn their letters, then learn their signs. The more we can get this letters, sounds combination together, the easier it's gonna be for the brain to stop looking at words as images and start recognizing that no, they're just symbols and I have to decode them. Now the last thing I think is really important here is this, this study just shows how adaptable the brain is. In just a little bit of training, the brain started to process totally random squiggles and lines as letters or as meaningful complete objects. The brain was changing to allow for expertise to emerge and build. This means practice with anything, the brain can adapt to it and you can become great at it. Think about the people who can look at a fingerprint and see everything holistically in a heartbeat. They weren't born with that. They put in the time, the effort, the repetition, and the brain adapted to make that a skill for them. So this kind of shows that if you can put in the hard yards and get through the struggle of learning, anything can get stuck in the brain. That's the entire job of the brain, simply to adapt. So thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. Another great one. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked it, if you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe below. And our discussion question this week is gonna involve the reading wars. Now I've been in education for almost 20 years and honestly, for as much as I know of the reading wars, I haven't, I don't ever think been in a school that teaches whole world word reading. So it's like a thing that I know exists, but I've never really come across it. So if you could drop a comment below, let me know your experience with the reading wars. Let us know your thoughts, get the conversation going below. We can go back and forth. I hope you're all well and I'll see you guys soon. Bye y'all.